Hello and welcome to another episode of Dorks and Bolts. On this episode, I'm gonna finish the installation of the HVAC controller unit that I installed on the past episode that you can check up here. And we are going to code it today with uh, ESYS. It's a known programmer tool for this kind of uh, work. A little disclaimer before the beginning of the video, I'm gonna use a part that was sourced from the dealer specifically made to fit the options in my car as well as the coding level that I have currently on entire units of the car. This will make this installation and the coding a little bit easier. However, it's not impossible to do it if you source this piece from eBay or a junkyard and I can show you how to do that if you leave me a comment below or Stick, stay tuned because I will be doing a retrofit of a unit that I sourced from a rep, from a junkyard and this part was completely not specific for my car. In fact, this part was made for, an, for a European car which I had to flash and code it with my car options and basically make it to the same level as all the other modules so it can communicate correctly. Now everything has been plugged we double check everything is great and we have plugged the battery back in so now we see boom we got it working so as I told you before we have a new kind of font and now I will right now it won't change colors because it's not coded yet but as you can see here on the side, we have, let me turn all the lights here. So we have the backlight coming from the back of the unit. So as you can see, the uh, AC light is blinking right now because the system needs to evaluate how much liquid there is in the system. Just keep it over 1,500 RPMs and it will go away. And now we go to the coding. Once the connection has been established through ACES, um, the general procedure of how to do it, there are many videos out there, or if you guys want, just put in the comments that you want me to do uh, an introduction video, how to set this up or how to create a connection to your car, I'll do that. So first thing we read the car, and we can see that we have the options available right under this folder and we have the numbers uh, of all the options included in our car. However, if you are not sure exactly what they mean, on the other pane we can see what they mean in a more ver verbose way and uh, we can read what each code means to the option that we are looking for. The next step is to read what modules are installed in the car and what modules are in the order. So if, you, if we click on the ECUs, we see that on, we have a list of 26 ECUs detected. And if we scroll down, we will see that after the MBT unit, we do not have the AH KA module listed. But if we read the vehicle modules in the order, the module appears right there. However, this is the old module that was installed in the car. So what we need to do is detect first the new module that we have added. So if we try to read this module, obviously we're going to get an error. We're, the car is going to tell us like we are pointing to a uh, a unit with an address that doesn't exist. So this is going to give us an error. One way to overcome this is saving the, mo the vehicle order where the modules are located and the next thing that we're going to do is modify the values on the existing module that we just installed to trick the car into thinking that the module that we have on the list is actually the one that it's installed in the car. So we're gonna save them the file, we're gonna give it a 
name and then we're going to click on edit which is going to take us to another view where we can start modifying the file so here is the list of all the modules and their address they're located at and we see here that we have the IHKA module with the address 78 located right here now we're going to change the values and we're going to put that it's an 8 HKA3 and we're just going to save it like this and see if the car either responds to this or it's still not happy with that module. Once we have changed the name of the unit and we make sure that the address still points to 78 we can we can expand uh, the tree of options and we're gonna find the hardware the software they're running and the bootloader that each module has so we're first we're gonna manually modify this to match whatever is written on the label on the module we will continue to do this to all the other options Once we are done modifying these parameters, it's safe to close this window. Just um, a word of warning, if you didn't make a mistake in putting all these uh, numbers into those files, um, it's not really a big deal. We can always come back here and try to figure it out exactly which number are the ones that belong to which file. And there are also many other options to figure out all these parameters Leave a comment down below if you want me to create a video about that. Now that we have saved our changes, we can go back to the previous screen where we are inputting all the parameters on the VCM and we can load this file through the first window under file. We will we will see that we cannot write the SBT yet because we first we need to load the file that we have modified as making the car think that these are the actual options and modules currently running with the car. On these folders you can see that the option that we modified or the name of the module that we modified is already there so we have the IHK3 pointing to the address 78 and we are good to go we know the car thinks that that module has already been there now for the second part we still cannot write the SVT yet because we need to have a file to tell the car this is what I have and this is what I want to have that's what we will load on the other tab on file we will load the file at SVT target and what we're gonna do is that we're gonna load the same file that we just modified and according to the card there are not gonna be changes in hardware because that's exactly what we had and we're just making an update the card wouldn't know the difference and as you can see here our file has the target state pointed out in red has the same number of modules as the actual state so technically we're going from the same that we had so we now we can write the ESBT and there are, go there are going to appear a couple of warnings and depending on that you should proceed or not in my case the warnings that I received were are you sure you want to proceed which I clicked yes and the other one was are you sure you want to do this which I clicked yes now that we have sorted out everything else we know that the module is working we can see that um, the unit is basically working as it should we got the max AC we have all our functions everything is working correctly uh, we got the manual everything is all right so now if we try to turn on the lights we'll see that everything lights up <clears throat> but the display stays white 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna code the, the module to whenever we turn on the lights that we have here, whenever we turn on the lights, it will change to amber. So taking where we left off, we're gonna read the ECUs and we immediately see that we have Stellar IHKA3 listed. We're gonna read the coding data and this is gonna open a new folder where inside this folder we have the file where that contains all the options that we need. So we're gonna go ahead and click on Edit FDL which is gonna take us to another page where we are going to look for the option 3006 Bedin Felda which translates to uh, control panels and inside this folder we have the functions and the one that we are looking for is display barroom schlag which kind of translates to display color change and we're gonna click and modify it to say active we save the, the coding we'll go back to our previous screen and in here we just code the FDL once the FDL is coded we can go and see the results so now that we have coded that we switch on the lights just to check we can see that their dash is illuminated and there we go so whenever I turn off the lights it goes white and when I turn it on it goes orange or amber and there you go that's pretty much it thank you for sticking around for these two episodes of the installation and programming of the unit or I would say actually coding of the unit we didn't do any programming in this one on future videos I will be programming encoding and even flashing units for other projects like a head up display retrofit and a camera for detecting speed limits. Also in this video, I didn't mention parts how to uh, put back the glove, box, the glove box compartment or trim pieces that I had to remove to do the install. If you do know how to do those parts, you can cut the video now, but before you do that, subscribe, like, share with your friends, and click the notification bell to get, well, notifications, and uh, we can see you later. I will continue the video with the installation of the glove box and the trims. Later this week, I'm going to do a short video about how to splice the existing LED light over the cup holders to connect to the LED on the trim that we see illuminated behind the radio. Thanks again, and I hope to see you later. Bye.